Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net, and I am here with my hardware editor, Patrick Stone, to show you how to remove and apply thermal paste. We'll cover how to thoroughly remove and apply a new thermal paste to your CPU in the event you are changing the cooler or are simply working on a new build. At the end of this video, I'll give a little more depth and explain why proper technique can make the difference of as, as much as a few degrees Celsius, actually, in a real-world environment. So technique is important. And let's first go over what you need to actually uh, to remove the the thermal paste. You will need to be ESD free, of course. Ground yourself before working on this. You can read our guide on how to do that in the description below. You need to be grounded because your your CPU won't like it if you ESD it, so keep that in mind. You also want uh, anti-static compliant cloth is really what, what we say, but you can use a Q-tip. In all honesty, just be careful not to zap anything, and also be sure to remove any residual fuzziness from the CPU once you're done. You don't want that getting in, into the uh, socket once you've installed it. You need rubbing alcohol. Normal 70% works fine, but 90% rubbing alcohol is preferable. Just don't drink it. And, of course, you will need new thermal paste to apply. Now, uh, time to remove some thermal paste or thermal compound. So apply some rubbing alcohol to your cloth or Q-tip, as it were, and brace the CPU. You'll want to rub with the grain of the metal, preferably, to make things easier to ensure that no thermal paste is left in the crevices and continue removing the compound until the surface is shiny and clean. You should see the alcohol evaporating away momentarily, so uh, set the CPU aside after you have thoroughly removed all of the thermal paste and let it dry out before reapplying new thermal paste. That way you're not wasting any and that way no, uh, no rubbing alcohol gets stuck in the system. So do the same for your CPU cooler. It is not imperative that you, this is as clean as new because some thermal paste will almost always be left behind in the cracks, but do try to make sure that all of the contact points are fresh and scrubbed clean. Anything that is contacting directly with the CPU should be as clean as possible. Now, uh, again, rub with the metal to make things easier, and eventually it should all be removed. Once you're ready to apply new thermal paste to the CPU and cooler, it is important not to overthink it. Some tutorials will suggest using a gift card to smooth out the paste or credit card. Don't do this as it can leave behind air pockets, which will actually impact the cooling effectiveness of the compound. Instead, it is recommended that you put a blob of the thermal paste onto the CPU in the in the dead center when it's uh, and when the cooler is clamped onto the CPU, it will spread out nicely. So clamp the CPU into the socket, of course, and make sure your backplate is in place. If you do have a backplate for your cooler, once it's all clamped down, it sh you you're gonna put a blob of thermal paste onto the CPU. It should be about the size of uh, I don't know about half the size of a penny. Let's say use this video for reference. We're going to use the pressure applied by the cooler to naturally spread the paste around on its own, so apply the compound centrally. Clamp the cooler into place, and uh, and of course secure it nicely, and, and don't over-tighten it, but secure it firmly, and you're done. That's it. It should have squished the thermal paste around underneath it. No need to lift it off and check, as that will, that will eliminate the purpose of doing a lot of this. So uh, just trust that it has spread around as long as you put down enough. You may need to warm up the thermal paste uh, first in a cup of warm water if you have thermal paste that is very hard to work with. So let's talk about understanding thermal compound. First of all, too much compound can actually detract from its effectiveness. The entire purpose of thermal paste is to fill air pockets in the metals of the CPU and its cooler, and adding so much thermal paste that it significantly increases the distance between the CPU and cooler will be detrimental. And by significantly increases, I mean this is not something you can necessarily see with your eyes, but if you put down enough that it packs down and, and comes out of the sides of the cooler, for example, that is too much. So just keep it small and simple, about half the size of a penny or a, a pea, something like that, a Cheerio. <laughs> it is actually better to have too little thermal paste than too much, as it can decrease the ability to, uh, to properly cool, as I mentioned. You want the copper of the heat sink to spread across as much surface area of the CPU as possible, and the thermal paste act as, acts as as a filler, excuse me. Additionally, not all thermal paste is made equal. Some will have thermal conductivity that is better than others. Higher is better. So as you see here, uh, the Antec thermal paste has significantly higher thermal conductivity than the stock paste that came with our cooler. So do keep that in mind as you are selecting your thermal paste. And that's pretty much it. 
you will find the full article accompan accompaniment in the description below. Wow, I cannot talk today. So be sure to check that out for further details and graphics, which will uh, further explain how thermal paste works. And if you have any questions at all, please comment on the linked article, as I'll be more likely to see it and answer them. Or uh, feel free to comment below, and I'll keep an eye on it. So I will see you all next time.